Hey everyone, during my first playthrough of Dark Souls, I would occasionally use the bow to help take out some enemies that were far away or to attract them so I can take them on 1v1. This got me thinking, can you beat Dark Souls with bows only? So today I'll be going over my run and how I went about doing it. With that said, let's get into the rules for this run. Rule number one, bows only. There are four types of bows in Dark Souls, the short bow, the long bow, the cross bow, and the great bow. For this run, I'll strictly be using the short bow and the long bow because I hate myself for some reason. Rule number two, all equipment is allowed. That includes all armor and rings. Rule number three, only buff items or spells. In this case, that would only be power within due to the fact that bows cannot be affected by magic weapon or pine resin, which means we'll have to rely on elemental upgrades instead. Number four, embers are locked behind bosses. I can only get large ember and divine ember after beating bell gargles and large divine ember and dark ember after ornstein and smo number five level caps this will be for each mandatory boss the max level cap for this run will be 85 i do this to not be over level for the boss fights number six no glitches or mods number seven no summons and lastly, beat the game. Optional bosses are just optional. The goal is to beat the game, not every boss. With that all said, let's get this run started. Start by giving your character a name that you can definitely pronounce correctly. For the class, I went with the Hunter strictly due to the fact that it is the only starting class that starts with a bow. For the gift, I of course went with the Master Key for the easy access to Blighttown and Darkroot Basin. With our character all set, time to start our adventure. Wake up in your cell, loot the dead body in front of you that a handsome young lad dropped for us. Grab the key and get the hell out of there. Where you would normally pick up your weapon and shield, just run right past it, we won't be needing any of that. Make your way to the handsome young man who graciously helped you escape, smooth talk him into giving you some Estus, and watch him die right in front of your eyes, forcibly being indebted to him for the rest of your life. Well, on that cheery note, time to take on the first boss, the Asylum Demon. But first, make sure to grab the short bow and the standard arrows. They'll be directly to your right after opening the door. Equip the bow and arrows and walk through the boss door. I decided to try something out by jumping to the ledge to the left to see if I could land on the small platform, and to my surprise, you can. Well, this is going to be easier than I expected. Oh, dear God. And to my surprise, he can break it. Well played, FromSoft. Well played. The Asylum Demon isn't that hard of a fight using the bow, you just want to keep a good distance from him while shooting. When using the bow, it's best to use the lock-on feature so you don't have to manually shoot the enemy, even though manually shooting is a viable option. The only thing you really need to look out for is the amount of arrows you use. You only start out with 30, and by the end of the fight, I only had 14 left. So you want to make sure you don't waste any before the fight or during the fight. Because if you end up not having enough to kill the boss, you'll have to reset. With that said, unload all your arrows into him until he can't take it anymore, earning us our first Dark Souls bat. Then proceed to get kidnapped by a giant bird and end up at Firelink Shrine. After not listening to your parents about hitching rides from giant strange birds, make your way around the area collecting souls. There are four in total that you can get. Don't spend the souls on levels just yet. We'll be needing the souls to purchase more arrows. Also, while you're here, go to the elevator that has no shaft, pun intended, and hop down. Down here, you will find some chests. The very first chest you will see will have six homeward bones in it. Homeward bones are very useful for returning back to your last rested bonfire. We'll be needing this shortly. After you collect some bones, make your way to the undead merchant and along the way, grab some more souls lying around. We'll be needing a lot of souls for this run. Once at the merchant, pop some souls and buy as many large arrows as you can. You might be saying, Akane, why large arrows? They only add 15 more AR and you would be 100% right. But the arrow's damage is added to the bow's base AR. Let me show a quick example using our current level 4 stats. The way bow damage is calculated in the game is you take your bow's base power, which in our case is 31, plus the standard arrow's power of 45 to give us a total AR of 71. Then multiply that total by the scaling of our stats, which in this case is roughly 39%, which gives us a new total of 105. So if we now add the large arrow, which would be 60 instead of 45, that would give us a total AR of 126. As shown, this is why the added 15 AR is so good. If it was strictly only adding to our total AR and not our base, it would not be that great. 
With our new arrows in hand, let's head back to Firelink Shrine. We have a few things that we need to get done before heading to Andre. Back at Firelink Shrine, we'll head down to the elevator below the bonfire to get to New Londo Ruins. But before heading down, make sure to rest at the bonfire first. Don't make the same mistake as me. Now, normally we wouldn't go here until after beating Ornstein and Smo, but we can actually get a Firekeeper Soul from here. Cross the bridge like you would normally, and once you make it to the first section of Ghosts, head to your right. You'll find a small archway that has an opening. Through that opening, it will lead you to the Firekeeper Soul. Make sure to have the Homeward Bone equipped because we'll be using it for a quick escape. Hopefully you heed my warning or you'll end up back at Undead Parish like me. Once back at Firelink Shrine, upgrade your flask to plus one and head back down to New Londo Ruins. We have one more item that we need to get. I will forewarn you, this part is a bit tricky at our current level. Make your way through the ruins. Once you reach the area with the giant group of ghosts, bait the one blocking the door to get away from it while trying not to get killed. I wasn't so lucky on my first go around. Once you finally make it past them, take out Ingward. If you get unlucky like me and he ends up where you can't shoot him, reload the game and he should be there running in place. Once he is dead, head to the lever that lowers the water and go upstairs. Upstairs, you will find the composite bow. It is considered the strongest short bow in the game, but with the caveat of having the shortest range in the game. Unfortunately, at this time, the short bow does more damage than the composite bow, but once leveled up, we'll be using it throughout the entire run. Homeward Bone back to Firelink Shrine and start making your way to Andre. Use the shortcut to Darkroot Basin. Make sure to say hi to Havel on the way down. Once at Darkroot Basin, make sure to grab the large soul of a nameless soldier. It will be next to a tree to your right. On your way up to Darkroot Garden, look off to your right and you should see a ledge that has a dead body on it. Loot it and you'll get the longbow. The longbow will be extremely useful with sniping faraway enemies. Speaking of how the longbow works, let me demonstrate the difference between the shortbow and the longbow. The shortbow is great for dealing with close enemies and shooting arrows quickly. Now when using the manual aim, the shortbow falls off a bit. As you can see when shooting from a bit of range, the arrow will curve to the right which makes it a bit of an ordeal when trying to hit enemies, but the longbow is great for this. The longbow has no curve when shooting enemies from long raid news. Now be careful with how far you are when shooting an enemy, because the bow's damage will diminish the further the enemy is away to the point that it barely does any damage. The downside to the longbow is it takes longer to shoot, as you can see in this comparison of the bow's fire rates which is why we will only be using the longbow to snipe enemies from far away. While on the subject of shooting, did you know if you headshot an enemy, it will do critical damage? You can tell you successfully hit their head by this sound. The best way to get headshots is by manually shooting, which from time to time, I would switch from controller to mouse and keyboard so I could hit an enemy more efficiently. The controller is not that great when it comes to manually aiming the bow. After acquiring the longbow, finish heading to Undead Parish. Normally I would say at this point be careful of the Time Knight Demon, but I found recently that if you go left instead of right of him, it's much safer and pretty much guarantees you to not get one-shotted by him. Once at Andre, you can repair any of your equipment or use your extra souls to buy Time Knight shards to upgrade your weapons. Unfortunately, with the amount of souls I had, I was only able to buy two Time Knight shards. We will need a total of nine to get our composite bow to plus five. But before we start grinding, we need to check some things off our to-do list first. Grab the Fire Keeper Soul from the area and upgrade your flask to plus two. <laughs> Grab the Basement Key to gain access to the Lower Berg. <laughs> and lastly, save Lotric. Then hunt him down at Firelink Shrine and kick him off the ledge. You know, typical to-do list stuff. <laughs> Once he's good and dead, loot his body for his ring that gives us a 20% boost to health stamina, and equipment load. Make sure to not take it off because it will break. With that all done, time to start grinding. At this point, I would say go grind Undead Soldiers and Boulder Knights for Tie Knight Shards, but since we also need a decent amount of souls for arrows, I have a bit of a faster way to get both of these items. Make your way through Undead Paris to the bridge where the Red Drake normally appears. Knock down the ladder to access the bonfire. We will be needing this for the grinding method. Once everything is in place, go up onto the bridge and immediately go back under. The drake will shoot fire, killing the undead soldiers, giving you 555 souls. As the drake is killing the soldiers, make your way back to the bonfire and rest. You can just keep doing this as many times as you like until you have the amount of souls you need. The nice thing about this method is we do not have to waste any of our arrows to get souls. 
I grinded until I had about 10,000 souls. Now let me tell you what you should do at this point and not what I did. Head back to Andre, buy your Tynite Shards, and upgrade your Composite Bow to plus 5. I instead decided to gamble my way to the female merchant. You might be wondering why would I need to go to the female merchant for? Well, she sells fire arrows and the bell gargoyles are weak to fire. So I wanted to stock up on some before taking them on. I'm starting to understand why Griggs doesn't sell you stuff until you have a 10 in intelligence. Speaking of Griggs, once at Lower Berg, rescue him. We'll be needing to acquire an item from him later. After saving Griggs, fight your way through the army of dogs to the female merchant. Buy as many fire arrows as you can and open the shortcut door for easy access back to her. At this point, grind for as many arrows as you need. I stopped around 114 for fire arrows and 237 for large arrows. With that done, head back to Andre and finish upgrading your composite bow and hit our first level cap of 15. For points, I just dumped all of them into dexterity for as much damage as possible. Finally, with all that preparation done, we can finally take on the Bell Gargoyles. I'm just gonna say it, the Bell Gargoyles were super easy with the bow. With the damage from the fire arrows, plus being able to attack from pretty safe distance, made this fight a bit of a cakewalk. Which is a nice change in pace in comparison to how this fight usually goes for me. The only thing I think I could have done better would have been using the manual aim a bit more than strictly relying on the lock-on system. I'm pretty confident in saying you can keep a good distance on them to manually aim and get some easy headshots in, especially when they're doing their fire breath attack. With that said, fire a few arrows at them and earn our second Dark Souls badge. With that easy victory, we can make our way to Darkroot Gardens. We have a butterfly to kill. But before heading to Moonlight Butterfly, make sure to rest at the secret bonfire just in case. Moonlight Butterfly was surprisingly harder for me than the Bell Gargoyles. I honestly thought this fight would have been super easy, but I somehow managed to make it harder for myself. For the most part, locking onto her did the trick, but from time to time, my arrows would just miss. But the worst was when she flew down, the arrows kept hitting the damn bricks until it finally clicked for me that I could manually aim. That 9 intelligence really is not helping me out. I could just feel Griggs judging me all the way from here. Anywho, after using the 9 brain cells that I have, I finally managed to take her down. With her defeated, make your way up the tower and claim the Divine Ember. We'll be needing it for later. After claiming the Divine Ember, make your way to the Capra Demon, but first stop by the female merchant and stock up on some fire arrows. The Capra Demon fight surprisingly went well. I did have a close call at the beginning, but after that it was smooth sailing. I just ran up the stairs and just hanged out on the archway. From here, just shoot him and he should go down pretty quickly. With the Capra Demon defeated, we earn ourselves the Depths Key. Make your way into the Depths, grab the- oh, what the fuck? Well, someone at FromSoft fucked the hitbox up on this wall. As I was saying, make your way into the Depths, grab the Large Ember, and save Laurentius. Back at Firelink Shrine, talk to Laurentius and acquire the Pyromancer Flame. We will be needing this to use power within. Now, we need to buy the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring off of Griggs, but it costs 20,000 souls. So I decided to hit up my usual dealer and get the good good. After getting the goods, head to Griggs. Make sure to have your intelligence at 10 or Griggs will not sell you anything. Buy the ring and kill him. I'm tired of this motherfucker judging my intelligence, even though he kind of has a point. Plus, we need the slumbering dragon crest ring, so the murder is justified. After putting Griggs a few inches under, I made my way through the catacombs to grab a green Tynite shard. The reason I'm going to get the green Tynite shard is to turn the composite bow into a divine weapon. And to be honest, I should have waited to do this until after the Quaylag fight. So my whole plan for this run was to make the composite bow into an oculate weapon. The reason I chose to do this is because later on you can get Moonlight Arrows that have a magic attack of 80. When combining this with a plus 5 Oculate Composite Bow, which scales with Faith, and for argument's sake let's just say we have a Faith of 50 and a Dex of 30, which would give us an AR of 556, which from my research is the highest possible AR for a short bow, even the Dark Moon bow falls short with a total AR of 457, and that's a short bow that specializes in faith damage. Knowing all of this, I kind of jumped the gun and made my composite bow a divine bow a bit too early. This will all be a bit more clear when I get to the Quaylag fight. 
I grabbed the shard and made my way to Andre to make the bow into a divine weapon. While here, stock up with some more arrows. Purchase the weapon smith box so we can finish upgrading our weapons in Blighttown. Before heading to Blighttown, stop at Firelink Shrine and purchase the spell Homeward from Petrus. It will help out with grinding throughout the run, and if you need a talisman, you can get one for free in a chest near the Homeward Bones that we got at the beginning of the run. And with that done, start making your way to the poisonous hell that is Blighttown. On the way down, grab the Firekeeper's Soul. Probably best to go up and upgrade the flask to plus three, but I was feeling confident at the time and chose not to. Once down at the bottom, we can start grinding giant leeches. Giant leeches have a 5.15% chance to drop large Tynite shards, and a 2.06% chance to drop green Tynite shards. We will need 9 green Tynite shards to get our divine bow to plus 5. If you were wise and heed my warning, you will need 10 large Tynite shards to get your bow to plus 10. I also at this point would like to mention I'm rocking the Thieves outfit solely because it's the closest thing to Quincy gear that I could find. Once done with that, make your way up Blighttown to get Power Within. Lucky for us with the bow, we can easily take out that weird looking thing, I have no clue what it's called. After that, max out your weapon and hit our next level cap of 35. Here I started putting points into Faith to help out with increasing my damage since my C scaling in Dex is now a D. With that all out the way, we can take on Quaylag. Quaylag overall wasn't that hard of a fight, but it could have been easier if I didn't upgrade my bow to a divine bow. I didn't think the descaling would hurt me that bad, but it did a good number on the damage. At close range with power within, my bow was only doing 70 damage. I'm pretty confident if I would have stayed the normal path to plus 10, it would have done more reasonable damage. Besides that one hiccup, the fight was pretty chill. Early on, I tried to manually aim at her human body because in hitting that, as we all would, it stuns her. Now you should try to do this throughout the whole fight, but I chicken out after she got a hit on me. But even with being a coward, just keep your distance, poke a few holes in her, and we will earn ourselves our third Dark Souls badge. After that fun time with Quaylag, have some fun time with her little sister. Join her covenant and give her all of your humanity. Sadly, we only had enough for her tier 1 sub benefits. We'll be needing her tier 2 later on to access a shortcut to the bed of chaos. Head back to Andre and buy the crest of Atorius. Make your way to the sealed door and open it. In this area to your right is the forest hunter archer who has the black bow of Ferris. I honestly thought she was Ferris, but the wiki says otherwise. Kill her and acquire the bow. The Black Bow of Ferris is the strongest longbow in the game and will be extremely useful with sniping enemies. While we're here, we'll do a bit of grinding. You can actually round up the enemies in this area. I would suggest only getting the first three due to being able to aggro them. Lead them to the staircase, run off to the side, and run into the corner. When doing this, the AI will for some reason run straight on top of you and off the ledge. Occasionally, one will not fall off and you might have to convince them to jump off. Doing this will net you 6,000 souls each time. Do this enough times to hit our next level cap of 45. I just put all my points into faith since we already capped out at 30 decks. After that, grind up some more souls to stock up on arrows. Once you are satisfied with the amount of arrows you have, make your way through Sin's fortress. Take out the giant up top, which after luring him to the door, he was kind enough just to take the punishment and die. With the giant out the way, time to take on the iron golem. Once again, this is another easy boss fight. The Iron Golem really can't do anything to you when keeping your distance. He does have an air slash attack, but he only used it once at the beginning of the fight for me. Really, when he starts to get close to you, just run under his legs, keep some distance, and keep shooting at him. And before you know it, he'll go down, earning us our fourth Dark Souls badge. After finishing off the Iron Golem, hitch a ride from some more strangers. We apparently did not learn our lesson from the giant bird. They kindly drop us off at An Orlando and we can start making our way to the castle. On my way to the castle, I found out if the enemy is so far away from you, the arrow can just go straight through them. Not even damaging them and when it does hit, it doesn't even get their attention. Oh wait, just take a few steps forward and they'll start coming. Gotta love the immersion. Make your way into the castle by convincing the silver knight to walk off a ledge. Once inside, make your way to the giant blacksmith. Here we can buy Moonlight Arrows for a whopping 500 souls per arrows, Jesus Christ. If you haven't noticed the theme of this run yet, we will be having a lot more grinding to do. 
I personally just stayed at the castle and killed Silver Knights for 1,000 souls, but the faster option would probably be to go back to Darkroot Garden and do that area's grinding method. During this time, I hit our next level cap of 60, and once again, I put all my points into Faith, which actually helps since we have the Moonlight Arrows this time. Buy as many Moonlight Arrows as you need, I personally grinded to 246. Once you are satisfied with the amount of arrows you have, time to take on Ornstein and Smo. I have some great news for you all. I had no issues with this fight. The Divine Composite Bow with the Moonlight Arrows and Power Within did a nice 218 damage. When keeping my distance from Ornstein and Smo, they really didn't stand a chance. Which I had a feeling this was going to be the case since I've done a sorcery playthrough before and it played out the exact same way. I highly recommend if you're struggling with this fight to do a sorcery build or a bow build and you'll have no more issues with them. With that said, I focused on Ornstein first, making sure to look out for his charge attack and his lightning attack. Those are the only two attacks that can really hit you from far away and with that alone, I was easily able to take him down. Apparently Smo has no issues that I just killed his friend that he just immediately consumes him. I personally think Smo has been secretly waiting for this moment all along. With Smo's new stolen lightning powers, he's still no threat. Just hide behind a pillar and oh dear god. I have been in this game six times and not once has he ever been able to do that. Well great, that's a new PTSD unlocked. Luckily it only happened this one time, but trust me I was ready to bail at any moment. Just make sure to try and shoot him from a somewhat safe place. Also be careful when shooting him when his hammer is down, it will not damage him if it hits his hammer. With that said, take some careful shots and Smo will go down, earning us our fifth Dark Souls battle. After that surprisingly easy fight, visit Guinevere. No titty viewing today, we gotta earn that show. Shouldn't the world be plunged into everlasting darkness because there's no more big titty goddess? Are the giant knights still there? Well, look at that. They are. If I walk back in, what will happen? Oh, there's the everlasting darkness due to no more big titties. Well, after ruining everyone's day, time to ruin one more. Sneak behind Dark Moon Nightus and get it an easy head shot. We're not going to talk about it. Maybe you should put some more points into intelligence. <laughs> oh, shut up, Griggs. After that embarrassment, upgrade your flask and place the Lord Vessel. With that done, time to head to the Tomb of Giants. Down here, we'll be getting the large divine ember and some white tinite chunks. To get white tinite chunks, we'll be farming bone towers. Bone towers have a 5% chance to drop one. We will need 14 white tinite chunks to upgrade our composite bow to Ocklet plus 4 and black bow of Ferris to divine plus 9. The best farming location for this is right next to the first bonfire in the Tomb of Giants. You will make your way up the ladder, walk to the left off the ledge, and walk to your right until you find three bone towers waiting for you in a hallway. After you finish farming, you can go grab the large divine ember, which is to your right from the ladder in a giant's tomb. Go figure. While we are down here, make your way to Nito's boss door, but instead, grab the white tinite slab. We will need it to get our oculate bow to plus five. Oh yeah, I forgot. You kill Pinwheel before all of this and get the right of kindling. Whoops. Once you have that, you can make your way back to Firelink Shrine. Once there, hitch a ride from our bird friend from earlier and end back up at the Undead Asylum. Make your way back to your cell and grab the Peculiar Doll. From here, head back to An Orlando to get to the Painted World of Ariamis. Die and waste a shit ton of expensive arrows on Bonewheel skeletons. God, I hate these bastards so much. Make your way up the tower and get the Dark Ember. With that bad boy, we can finally make our bow into an oculate weapon. Leave the Painted World, but first, say hi to Priscilla, and then proceed to throw yourself off the bridge. Once back in the real world, find Andre and fully upgrade our bows. Hit our next level cap of 65. At this point, I had hit 50 in Faith, so I just started dumping the rest of my points into Vitality. With all that done, we can finally take on Gravelord Nito. So the plan for Nito was pretty simple. Use the Divine Ferris Bow to kill the Skeletons, and for those of you who don't know, Divine Weapons upon killing the Skeletons prevents them from coming back alive. After taking care of the Skeletons, proceed to use the Composite Bow to kill Nito. The plan worked, but the damage wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. 307 isn't bad, but I was expecting closer to 400 or more, especially with using Power Within. Overall, the fight wasn't too bad, but due to being a glass cannon, he can easily two-shot you. 
which almost happened to me a few times. With that said, play it safe, keep your distance, and you'll earn your six Dark Souls back. With the Nito taken care of, we can make our way to the Bed of Chaos. Stop by Quayli's little sister and offer her 10 more humanity to finally get her tier 2 sub. No tier 3 though, we're better than that. Visit Ceaseless Discharge who apparently has a 3 tier sub to his sister. Japan and their hint grab the robes, dodge the discharge fluid, and proceed to kill him. That's why we don't become tier 3 subs. Make your way down to the shortcut, open it with our tier 2 privileges, and time to take on FromSoft's biggest regret. I did not have a good time this go around with the bed of chaos. I made it to the first checkpoint, died, then died again trying to make it back, made it back, got the second checkpoint, and died again, because God hates me, I died again on the way back to finally make it back to her and finally kill her. <sighs> Just give me the fucking badge. Just fuck it. With my personal hell over with, we can make our way to Sif and the Four Kings. Don't forget to restock on arrows and hit our next level cap of 75. Shocker to no one, all the points went into vitality. Make a quick stop by the forest hunters and join their covenant. In doing so, it will summon Shiva of the East and his invisible bodyguard. Take them out and Shiva's bodyguard will drop the dark wood grain ring. This ring will change our roll to a flip and give us more iframes as well, but the caveat is that you need to have an equipment load of 25% or less for it to work. Should I have gotten this sooner? Yes. Did I? No. But I'm pretty sure none of you are shocked by that at this point. With our new dodge roll acquired, we can take on Sif. Sif put up a good fight. Out of all the bosses besides she who should not be named, Sif got a lot of hits in. For a good moment, I thought she was going to kill me, but unfortunately for our poor girl, I was able to survive. I will spare y'all the burden of seeing my evil act. The way you feel right now is how I felt after the Bed of Chaos. Betrayal. Don't blame me, blame FromSoft. After watching my sub count go down, make your way to New Londo Ruins to take on the Four Kings. Before talking about the Four Kings fight, I just want to make a correction from my last video. In my last video, I stated that while wearing the Ring of Artorias, that you cannot use power within. That is not true. Thankfully, some viewers were able to correct me. It was actually due to using Transient Curse, not the Ring of Artorias. With that said, let's get to the fight. The Four Kings actually gave me a hard time. Let's list all my failures real quick. I stupidly kept my distance forgetting that the Kings do more damage the further away you are from them. Not doing enough damage to kill a King before another one arrived. Not listening to Griggs about having enough intelligence. Okay, maybe not that one, but definitely not upgrading another bow for this fight. This was my first time ever dying to the Four Kings and the first time that I ever felt fear while fighting them. Second round, I tried to make sure to stay super close to them to negate most of their damage. Unfortunately for me, my bow was not doing that great of damage, so I had to try and attack non-stop to make sure I could kill a king before another one spawned. In honesty, I was pretty scared towards the end of the fight when two kings were out and they were pressuring me away from them. I 100% started panicking, which led to me spamming the R1 button as fast as I could, and in that panic induced state, I was able to defeat the four kings, earning us our 8th Dark Souls back. With the four kings defeated, time to make our way to Anor Londo. Find Seath and let him kill you. While being naked, of course, can't give him the pleasure of killing us with our armor on. Break out of jail, again, run past the tentacle mommies, I mean monsters, get the key and get the hell out of there. Quick side note, these motherfuckers arrows follow you. Look at this shit. My arrows can't do that. I had no clue that this bullshit was going on before and just wanted it to be known to everyone. With that said, hit our next level cap of 80, in my case 79. Once again, I put all my points into vitality. With that done, time to take on Seath the Scaleless. Seath was a weird but funny fight. I forgot Seath is a giant magical dragon, so having a bow that does magic damage wasn't the smartest move and legitimately had me terrified for a second. But funny enough, I found out if you keep rolling in a direction while shooting him, he'll just slowly turn to find you. I shit you not, he did not use his AoE attack once, which I was waiting for the entire time. The fight went from terrifying to having a good laugh at his AI. The only attacks he would do occasionally was his beam attack, which isn't too bad to roll away from, and his arm swing attack, which came nowhere close to hitting me. So after that fun but slow fight, we earn ourselves our ninth Dark Souls. With Seath defeated, we can finally take on Gwyn. 
hit our last level cap of 85, and as before, I put all my points into Vitality because I'm going to need as much health as possible for this last fight. Normally at this point, I would have my character walking up the steps to Gwyn, but not this time. I was tired of grinding for arrows and just sprinted past all the Black Knights. With that said, I'll let the fight play out and commentate on it afterwards. Enjoy. Okay, let's just get this out the way. It took me three tries to beat Gwyn. Sadly, my no death streak on him comes to an end. The first go around, I did not learn from my past mistakes of keeping my distance from the boss. And in doing so, he ended up clapping my cheeks. After Gwyn had his easy happy ending with me, the second go around, I made him work for it. I was starting to figure out how to dodge him properly and making sure I didn't get too far away from him. I would try and use the stalagmites for cover to heal or just to have a breather between his attacks. Unfortunately, I ended up rolling into a stalagmite, which caused me to get killed. I was so close to killing him too, but the third round was my round. I actually learned his attack pattern, kind of. Usually he will do two attacks in a row, which you can just dodge and then shoot, but every now and then he would do a third attack, which would catch me off guard. Looking back at the footage now, his pattern makes more sense. His two hit combo starts with a lunge attack, but his three hit combo starts with a swing attack. A lot of you probably already knew this, but I had no clue and I just wanted to share that with you all. With that new information and me leveling up as a player, I was able to secure the last Dark Souls badge. Man, this run was interesting. Started off feeling like I was playing on easy mode, but after the ONS fight, the difficulty just shot straight up. Which is more in due to me not optimizing my bows for each boss, but that's okay. I still had a fun time with it. The grinding for arrows, not so much. It definitely got tedious at the end having to grind souls to buy arrows, and would be my only warning for anyone that wants to try this run. But with that said, I just want to thank all of you for watching, it really does mean a lot to me. Until next time, take care. That true God be cast upon.